And if you can be fair to marry, marry as many as four, but if you cannot marry just one, one is bound to ask, if Muhammad brought a greater and more perfect revelation, then why does man seem to regress instead of progress with the moral standards of the Quran? Jesus Christ enunciated who made them at the beginning, made them male and female. If God wanted man to have four wives, he should have made more than one Eve. Certainly, a Muslim husband may cast his wife adrift without a Muslim husband may cast his wife adrift without giving a single reason or even a notice. The husband possesses absolute, immediate, and unquestioned power of divorce. He can simply announce to his wife, I divorced you three times and she's gone. No privilege of a corresponding nature is reserved for the wife. Be quiet, I ask you to be quiet. The Old Testament. Are you civilized or uncivilized? The Old Testament, in the Old Testament, the last book declares God despises divorce. In the New Testament, we are encouraged and warned a man should not divorce his wife. I'm not talking about what they're doing. I'm talking about the word says. You be quiet. Here are two more verses from Surah An-Nisa 411, 176, which the inferiority of the Muslim women are placed there. Allah charges you, notice this, concerning the provision for your children to the male, the equivalent of the portion of two females. Ladies and gentlemen, here is an amazing admonition. I read to you from Surah An-Nisa, verse 34. Men are in charge of women because Allah hath made the one of them to excel the other. And because they spend of their property for the support of women. So good women are the obedient, guarding in secret that which Allah hath guarded. As for those from whom you fear rebellion, admonish them and banish them to beds apart and scourge them. In contrast, God instructs Christians, husband love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Dear friend, I'd like to remind you, it was really an interesting thing when Muhammad began, while at Mecca, Muhammad, realizing that he was surrounded by enemies, taught his followers toleration. He was simply a teacher commissioned to deliver a message, even for a time. At Medina, he was moderate. In Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 256, we are told there is no compulsion in religion. La ikraha It was very different after Muhammad's power was established when the Muslim armies went forth to attack the surrounding tribes and nations, they offered them three options, Islam, tribute, or the sword. Incidentally, is this not a proof that the spread of Islam was not for a religious and divine call, but economic? Because of the tribute, you didn't have to be a Muslim. Put yourself in that position with these choices. What would you and your family choose as a result? Numerous Christians paid with their lives, yet the numbers of those who took the easy way out vastly outnumbered the martyrs. History informs us that the 12 months following Muhammad's death were spent in bitter battles led by Khalid ibn Walid to bring back the Arab tribes who became apostate. Over one million Armenian Christians were savagely slaughtered by the Turkish Muslims at the beginning of the 20th century. Since that time, an Armenian secret organization assassinates a top Turkish leader or diplomat in some country 
at the anniversary of the massacre in this world. This is their way of impressing on the minds of the world the horror of that atrocity and their insistence on revenge. Such was not the past. It is still going on in the present. Over one million people have been killed in the war between Iraq and Iran, which are two great Muslim countries. According to a 23-page report, filled 20 March 1987 by Khartoum University, Professors Ushairi Mahmoud and Sulaiman Ali Baldo, more than 1,000 Dinka citizens, including women and children, were massacred in the western Sudan town of Diyam in 1987. The Baptist Record newspaper story of November 5, 87, adds that dozens of pastors have been killed and many churches destroyed since Islamic law was imposed in 83, when Sudan was officially declared as an Islamic Republic. Another report appeared in the Baptist World Alliance newsletter of September 87, page 2, indicating that 130 church buildings and pastors' homes of all Christian denominations in Kaduna State in Nigeria were destroyed by Muslim rioters. Surat al tawbah gives the following instructions for dealing with Jews and Christians. Fight against such of those who have been given the scripture as believe not in Allah nor the last day. According to a tradition, Ibn Abbas and Aisha, the Prophet, is said to have permitted the blood to be shed even of him who abandons his religion and separates himself from the community. This practice continues in some Muslim countries. However, the backslider is to be given an opportunity to repent in the Western world rather than have his blood shed. Consult Surat Ali Imran 83 to verse 90. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to ask you, have you noticed that one of the great things our Arab people say is that the Prophet Muhammad was illiterate. That's why the Quran is so great. Many experts of the life of Muhammad believe he was. However, such a claim is not tenable or credible. The claim may be an attempt to magnify the work of Muhammad in producing the Quran, though he was an illiterate, thus substantiating the so-called miracle of the Quran. Here are my reasons for your listening pleasure. We are told that when the treaty with the Meccans was to be signed by Muhammad, they refused to acknowledge him as the apostle of Allah. Relenting to their demands, he struck out that title and wrote with his hand, instead of Muhammad, Rasulullah Muhammad, son of Abdullah. A second incident supporting his literacy occurred on Muhammad's deathbed. Realizing that he was dying, he motioned to Aisha, his favorite wife, out of 15 of them, to bring him something upon which to write the name of his successor. But he was too weak to write. Third, he served for many years as a trading camel caravan merchant who would naturally know the three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic, traveling to Damascus a number of times. Fourth, while visiting the St. Catherine's Monastery at Mount Sinai in 1979, I was shown by the monks a personal letter said to be signed by Muhammad himself, guaranteeing the freedom of the monks and their monastery. If this, is, if this can be verified, it presents strong proof for Muhammad's literacy. Finally, I wish to seal the truth and provide you an unequivocal, solid, sound, and overwhelming proof that Muhammad was literate. Here it is, from the famous frequently memorized Surah Al-Alaq. Iqra, bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, khalaq al-insana min alaq, iqra wa rabbuka al-akram, alladhi allama bil-qalam, allama al-insana ma lam ya'alaq. One notices that Allah told Muhammad to read, and Muhammad read. Theoretically speaking, if one can read, then can he not also write? Why would Muhammad's God also state, who taught by the pen, by the pen? Do you realize that in the manual of hadith, which Mr. Didat had in the seats at Royal Hall, page three to six, we are told, Aisha said, 
that the angel Gabriel ordered Muhammad to read three consecutive times and he read. I cannot understand for the life of me why Muslims insist on calling the most famous Arab leader, fascinating, formidable leader of Arab world, our Arab world, an ignoramus, an illiterate. This is not proper and I don't believe that and nothing supports that. Now, I'd like to ask you something. No one who studies the Quran in any language will fail to notice that there are monumental problems in its context.